Uh, introduction. What's the problem that uh, we're trying to solve? Adaptive streaming is great. It actually uh, makes it possible uh, to stream video over internet and for half of this room to have a job. And uh, the problem with, uh, with it, not with a job, with, uh, in, with uh, adaptive streaming, is that uh, we need to encode a lot of uh, times the same content. So uh, how do we make it faster? And in this talk, we'll try to hand wave through uh, how we can make it faster by recycling analysis decision. How uh, is this actually uh, done for HEVC? And how can you use it now with uh, X265 open source coding? So the motivation, okay, okay the same problem. Uh, a lot of encodes. In case of uh, Apple HLS, you have 12 encodes that you actually need to do to provide Ultra HD content. And this requires a significant amount of computation. And there is a glaring inefficiency here because the content is perceptually identical. If I'm moving my, uh, my hand, those of you who are viewing it on live stream, uh, you will view exactly the same hand. Uh, the only difference is how many pixels does it uh, occupy. Now, if we formalize this, uh, we have identical motion field, identical objects, identical texture. The only difference is uh, uh, resolution or uh, the bit rate. Now, this means that you have very high correlation between motion vectors and quad tree structure on one resolution and uh, on the other. But, and this still am amazes me, in a lot of cases, we're trying to solve exactly the same problem and find exactly where my hand is 12 times. So the solution is very simple, and that's why it's a 10-minute talk. Uh, just take uh, encoder decisions and reuse them. So let's define analysis information. Mainly, this is uh, motion vectors and quad tree structure, but also uh, other, uh, other data. and. Uh, we go, we run a low resolution encode, 540p for instance in uh, this example. We export uh, it and, th uh, and then we reuse it at higher resolution. So in the X265 uh, implementation it's uh, two, uh, 2n by 2n. Uh, so uh, 1080p in this case. And uh, so we go and scale it uh, and then do some amount of refinement. Of refinement. and then do some amount of refinement. I'll talk about it uh, in, in a couple of uh, seconds. And th uh, then we go and uh, reuse it, and uh, uh, we reuse it in the, uh, in the bitstream. We export the new, uh, the new analysis file. And then we go, uh, we go and uh, do 4K, and uh, exactly, the sa exactly the same uh, thing. So uh, we have, uh, in this case, a three-level pyramid. And uh, we can uh, just go and uh, uh, take uh, the scaled vectors and the, sc uh, the scaled uh, uh, quad tree structure and run with it. And it actually works, but uh, it has uh, a penalty in uh, terms of quality. Now, uh, we have several uh, things that we, uh, that we can do. Uh, some faster, so, uh, some are slower. So first of all, there are things that you, ca that you cannot uh, deduce from uh, lo uh, lower resolution uh, information. For instance, there is no such thing as uh, 4x4 four four coding unit in uh, HEVC. So you, can, uh, you cannot see if, uh, you, uh, if you can do 8x8 eight eight unless you actually do this on, uh, in your current resolution. So this is uh, one thing. Another thing is uh, trying to, uh, to at least minimally refine uh, motion vector. So uh, j uh, just for the sake of the example, imagine that your scale is not 2, that your scale is 10. So you have a motion vector of 42. You, wa uh, you want to scale it to 420. Actually, you, uh, your, uh, your 420 may be uh, 425 or uh, 415, and you want to figure out which, uh, which one is actually uh, better. So that, uh, then you may want to reevaluate the skip and merge uh, mode, and uh, at the extreme, you may want to, re uh, to redo uh, motion estimation. So uh, why, may, why you may want to do this? This is uh, ray distortion optimization. You can, have a, uh, you can have a situation where you are more sensitive or less sensitive uh, to the amount of bits you're spe you spending 
on encoding something. So this is formalized as lambda, and you are, let's say, uh, in case of 4K, you are extremely sensitive to rate. Uh, if for some reason you want to do 5 megabits, you are not really sensitive to rate if you do 25 megabits. But it costs a, lo uh, a lot of uh, compute. So the last thing that, uh, uh, that was attempted was um, a dynamic method where uh, we switch between uh, the three strategies. One, just, che uh, just checking things that weren't available at low res. Uh, one, reevaluating skip merge. And uh, uh, the three, motion estimation. So uh, now to, uh, to the actual results. So one of the interesting things here is that uh, there is a negligible improvement in quality that is pretty, con uh, pretty consistent here. So the perceptual SAM plus metric raises by quarter to half a GND. So this doesn't mean anything in terms of quality except for there is no quality degradation, which, uh, which was some, uh, something that a lot of people, including uh, ourselves, expected. Uh, the best news are that this, uh, that this, is, uh, this thing is fast. Uh, so, if we don't uh, redo motion estimation, we end up uh, speeding things uh, by uh, 2.4, 2.5x. In case of um, uh, 4K encoding, which is uh, running in very slow at blazing 0 0.76 frame per second, uh, this, actually ma uh, this actually matters. So this is, I, th I think this is a pretty awesome result because what you, uh, what you end up having is paying with increase in quality for increase in, in speed. What does, uh, how do you use it um, in real life? So insta uh, instead of running independent encodes that you would, uh, that you would have done uh, before, you end up with encode graphs. So you, ha uh, you have a, uh, a DAG uh, that has uh, two types of dependencies. One is reuse of analysis, the other is reuse of QP file. QP file is just a, te a text file uh, that, uh, that is uh, fra uh, frame uh, number in presentation order and uh, frame type and optionally a QP, which we, do which we no don't have to use. Basically, we need to keep IDRs uh, aligned in a, in a practical encoding. Now, we do 360p. This is an example of uh, the 12-step uh, HLS ladder. We, uh, we do th uh, 360p. We export QP file to, five, uh, to 540. Now, we, can, we don't have to have different resolutions. We can have the, sa uh, the same resolution and reuse analysis this way. So we, t uh, we take uh, the 1.9 megabit, um, 540p. We, re we reuse it both in, five, uh, in 540 at 1.1 and in 1080 at 7, uh, at seven megabits. Uh, for uh, some reason, we have our, uh, our theories there, uh, but Prediction works uh, typically better from higher bitrate to, uh, to lower bitrate. Now, uh, now, we do exactly the same thing, 1080p7 to 1080p uh, 5.4, 1080p7 to uh, 2160 at uh, 20. So uh, the, problem with, the only problem with this approach is that uh, before you could par parallelize uh, much more. Now, uh, now, for instance, you need to wait till the first 540p uh, uh, to, uh, to do 1080p, you cannot do it separately. So you can parallelize things, but you can parallel, uh, parallelize only things that don't, ha uh, that have, uh, that, that don't have dependence on, the, uh, on each other. On the other hand, this reduces uh, compute time to a degree that I can take at any, uh, any moment. So these two slides are a very long way of uh, uh, saying that's all, folks. So what we've seen is uh, if we reuse uh, the results of the analysis stage of the encoder, we can uh, achieve a dramatic uh, speed up at no uh, quality cost. And uh, th this decrease uh, of uh, cycles uh, we're spending on encoding uh, has the price of uh, increase uh, in end-to-end -end latency. So again, this, uh, this, can, uh, this can be solved uh, by split and stitch, just split into, sm uh, into, smaller, uh, into smaller chunks, and uh, you'll, uh, you'll be fine. The approach, while we discussed it in context of uh, HEVC, can, uh, can be done in VP9, can be done in AV1. Whoever is uh, interested in working on it, I would be glad to hear about uh, the experiences, results, and what we did wrong. Future work. So despite this talk being nearly over, there are a lot of things that we can still improve. One of the things is, since, uh, since we have 
um, analysis information at the high resolution. And typically, the rate control in X264, X265 uses uh, uh, look ahead that is a quarter resolution encoding. We're probably better off reusing this for look ahead. And same applies to temporal quantizer modulation, aka MB3 in X264 and uh, CU3 in X265. Lastly, try this at home. This is, implement, uh, this is implemented, uh, and uh, if you are able to, uh, to, re, uh, to read the, uh, the script here, this is a very simple way of running uh, 10, uh, 1080p and uh, uh, using 1080p for, uh, uh, for key encoding. So now, really, that's it, folks. Questions? <laughs>